I saw like a ton of missed calls from him. He shows up at my house, and back then I was living with my parents. Yeah, right? yeah. He shows up there, and uh, he beats himself up in the stairwell. Hey, what's going on? Sonia here with you, and oh man, welcome back to Men Explain. It has been a while, just like a relationship, we took a short little break, but we are back. <laughs> and I've got some special guests here with me today. Um, they will be no strangers to you, I promise you that. And um, it's almost going to be like a little catch up for us too. Please welcome Tabitha and Louis. Yay! <laughs> Hi, thanks for having us. Hi, I'm Tabitha. I'm a singer, sometimes actress, a dog lover, and dog mom. And um, I also like cheese. Nice. <laughs> Hi, I'm Louis, Tabitha's partner. Oh, that's Aww. really sweet. Okay. I like how you said, um, I like cheese, and then Love you looked cheese. at Louis. Because <laughs> he's is yeah. he cheesy, like all the time. <laughs> anyway, oh guys, gosh. I'm so happy to have you here. Seriously. You know, we're here today to talk about relationships, and this is yep. what the podcast is all about. We explore different facets of relationships, um, both in the workplace, friendships, relationships, romantic relationships, everything. We've been through so much over the past few episodes, and now we're going to be addressing toxic relationships. Relationships. Nice. Dumb, dumb, no, I mean, dumb. seriously, dumb, dumb, dumb. Yeah, that's right. As in, it, it's such a broad topic, isn't it? it because is. it doesn't just cover one thing. Like you've got the emotional aspect of it. Yeah. Then you know, at sometimes like the more serious stuff would be like the physical aspect of it. It's very broad. There's so many things that fall under it. Yes. It could also be like toxic bosses or managers and like... Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. Today, I mean, obviously we're going to be focusing on toxic relationships in a romantic sense as well. Um, have you guys personally experienced anything like that at all? Have you been in a toxic relationship? <laughs> Are you the toxic one? No, I don't think I have. I think I may have been like, when I was younger, mm. had like ex-girlfriends that were like, a little bit toxic, yeah. but nothing crazy. And but then, perhaps you might not even have realized it at the time. Yeah, exactly. You and younger. you were young, like yeah. 13, 14. Mm. Yeah. What yeah. about you? Mm. Anything? Uh, perhaps? <laughs> I think for me, maybe this topic like is a little bit close to home yeah. because I have been yes. in a relationship before where it was toxic. And so... I've got some experience, I would say. <laughs> yeah, 100%. So maybe, Tabs, if you want to like sort of expand on that a little bit, what did you experience in this toxic relationship that you want to highlight here on the show today? Yeah, okay, where do we even start? I feel like the relationship that I was in uh, in the past mm. was your very typical, standard, toxic relationship in a sense that it was very emotionally manipulative, mm. very controlling, there was also physical um, abuse. These are the things that you need to look out for, you know, in order to, I don't know, to how to prevent do I say yourself from just getting to be aware yeah. of it. Yeah, to be aware. Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of people don't realize they're in like exactly. toxic relationships, and that's the problem. It's exactly. true, it's true. And yeah. it's funny because I feel like I only realized it mm. years after. I wouldn't even say it like right after. Mm. It took me a while of like, you know, having to like really sit down and think about the things that did happen yeah. and like process them and then really like look inward to realize, actually, you know what? That was kind of messed up. Yeah. Like I didn't even see it. Yeah. Like someone else had to be like, hang on a second. That's not right. That's mm. not right. Have a look at that again mm. because you know, it's not okay. So on that note, um, experts have actually defined toxic relationships as any relationship between people who don't support each other, where there's conflict and people are undermining each other as well. There's p perhaps competition, disrespect, mm. you know, lack of cohesiveness, understanding. I think that's kind of all that you have mentioned earlier on as well. Yeah, yeah. But you know, on the flip side, I guess, I I want to know also how you got out of that situation. It's not so much when did I realize that this was a bad situation. I think I realized it pretty early on. Yeah. Like I was like, yeah, this is bad. Like obviously if somebody's mm. hitting you, that's not a good thing, yeah. right? You don't want to be in a relationship like that. It was more of how do I get out? Mm. That was what I was Thinking, struggling yeah. with, right? There's always the question, oh, if you're in an abusive relationship, why didn't you just leave, right? Yes, yeah. And so not to give any sort of explanation for why I didn't leave, mm. but I think a good um, context to help everyone understand is that abusers tend to cut off any close relationships that a person would have. Mm. So any close friends, yeah. 
which ended up happening at the time. Like my close friends at the time, I ended up being cut off from. My family wasn't in the country, mm. like my mom and my sister. So having, th they were far away. Like yeah. I felt like I wasn't really, you, you were know, isolated. I yeah. was isolated. It kind of felt like that. I was living in his house. Yeah. So again, you know, not my own space. Yeah. I didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. With all of these layers of things. Yeah. To get out is not that easy. Yeah. You know, yeah. there are like so many different things to unpack. And so for me, I always knew at some point it was going to happen. Mm. I just didn't know when. Yeah. I tried many times before, which is also something that I read about that a lot of survivors of toxic, toxic. relationships yeah. go through. They yeah. try multiple times before they can actually get out. Yeah. I wouldn't say that this was the, 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 the full reason why I left, but what did help mm. was the fact that I met Lou mm. and I felt extremely supported. And safe. And safe. Yeah. And he, at the time, had no idea what was going on mm. because I still wasn't talking about it to anybody. Yeah. I didn't want to because I didn't want people to look at me in a weird way. Mm. So I wasn't telling him what was going on, but just him being around us talking, me getting to know him a little bit better, I felt extremely safe and I've always felt that way since day one. Aww. And I still do now. No, nice. <laughs> you guys. He's like, thanks. Yeah. He's like, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll spill some tea now uh, before yeah. I ask you the next question. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I had an ex-boyfriend um, quite early on. I think like I was still quite young before I even started doing this. Yeah. It was really nice. Like I was totally in love with him and everything. We met at a club though. <laughs> like as I usually do <sighs> meet nice. people in clubs. It seemed great, you know, like yeah. for a while. I was over at his place so much. But things started to show like the cracks started to show when he was constantly like checking my phone firstly I oh. I hate that like yeah. you know even though I may not even have anything to hide you still feel the need to check my phone yeah. firstly secondly he would get super crazy and insecure when I don't for example reply a message fast enough girl and I know all of these was this when you were doing I radio know. though no no so this, this is was like before. Free, this like, was way before I was like, still, in still in like, school I was oh, in school okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah and then this was the deal breaker okay one night um, I didn't respond yeah um, because I don't know I was out with friends or I, I, my phone is on silent I can't remember I saw like a ton of missed calls from him. He shows up at my house. And back then I was living with my parents. Yeah. Right? yeah. He shows up there and uh, he beats himself up in the stairwell. I've heard another story like this. What is yeah. wrong with these fucking I idiots? don't know. Like, And my dad was like, shut my dad. Was just yeah. like, boy, can you stop doing yeah, this? Yeah, I'd be like, if I was your <laughs> was dad, like, I'd be like, bro, what are like, you doing? Yeah. He was like, can you get it together? <laughs> <laughs> and I can awesome. imagine Papa Chu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was like, with get the straightest together, okay. face, yeah. like, get yeah. your shit together. And he didn't even know the context of what was going yeah. on. He had yeah. to have a sit down with him and ask him, like, what happened? And when he found out it was because I didn't reply some texts, yeah. I'd be like, oh, like, get oh, come out on, my seriously, house. Seriously, you know? But also, I felt for him because I, I don't felt know. Felt for your time, dad or the boyfriend? No, the ex boyfriend. I would have felt for your dad. Because at the. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, okay? Imagine I how feel awkward that parents. is. Like him just walking out in like his yeah. boxer shorts and like a vest. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just like like eating dinner and then it's like this little waste man's there like mm, mm. This little wanker, I know you're gonna say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was about to he say, was about yeah. to say he wanker. Caught himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean I I was so young back then, I felt so bad for this guy. I was like, oh my god, this guy's beating himself up, you know, like yeah. beating himself up like this. Can you beat yourself up with your own fists? No. Maybe he was going through something, you know, I, I can't I can't speak for him because yeah. we know that there's so many levels of um mental well-being that we also have to address and I can't yeah. explain why he did that or what he was going through at the time but that was his way of acting out to me not responding or you know yeah. the possessiveness the insecurity and it just got too much I think at that point in time and there and then my parents were like we need to have a talk to you about but you know that's yeah. another form of yeah. manipulation though yeah because it's like you know it's <laughs> yes, making you no, feel yeah. guilt because really Tabs went exactly. through, Tabs went went through the, the same, same thing, thing. Yes. that's yeah. why I'm like this story is mad yeah. yeah so so I felt like it was my fault that he yeah. was beating himself up and exactly yeah. manipulation exactly I was, I was like maybe 18 I had no like yeah. freaking idea what was going on I was like this yeah. must have been my fault yeah but you know um, we moved on from there like we broke up shortly after so yeah. thankfully at the time I mean I have very supportive parents yeah I was gonna say did you yeah. break up because you had the support from your mum and dad yeah so to give them credit they didn't yell at me or say like what kind of choices are you making like seriously mm. but they knew that they had to let me learn yeah. And I feel, okay, this is a, a personal message to my parents, or public message. I'm sorry for putting you through so many ex-boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Pick up that, though. <laughs> you know what? My, 
my dad is a scary guy, okay? Like, oh my, my friends back in school used to not dare to send me home because they're like, your dad must be waiting at the door. They're like, scared. <laughs> so that, that, you know, sort of segues into the next question, which is about insecurities yeah. in a relationship. What do you think causes that kind of insecurity? In a partner. Oh wow! Where do you, where do you think one. that stems I, that, from? You can go, I think you could break that down like so much. Whether yeah. it be like yeah. their upbringing, whether yeah. they got hugged enough as a kid, whether they got praised enough as a kid. Right. I don't know. Maybe people just want to be controlling. There's a theory like everyone is self-destructive in some way, right? Yeah. Where like you've got a good thing going on and mm. you're happy in this little bubble that you form, that you're almost like it's too good to be true. So you go looking right. for something or right. like little things annoy you whether he may not pick up the laundry or he may not do the dishes or like the, like as simple as those little tiny tasks yeah. could be one of those things that like snowballs you to having a reaction so so yeah. let's say um you guys have a suspicion on each other on something or like you're unhappy about something yeah you would first talk about it right like yeah, you guys obviously. have this open relationship we yeah like communication is fucking key right like yeah, you, you, yeah. you don't talk in your relationships it's never gonna work who is more of the person that raises things up and confronts the other or is it even? Mm. It's hard, right? Because Tabs is stubborn and I'm stubborn. <laughs> no, like swear, <laughs> no, swear down, true. swear down. Oh, like yeah. my, I think my most toxic trait is I just shut off and I can ignore people. Yeah. yeah. I think you ignore me <laughs> to be... Okay. I'll show you. I'll ignore you. But my style of handling mm. um, stuff is to take a moment to just not speak. Because if I speak straight off the bat, mm. I'm going to say something I regret. That's a good Fair. point. So I yeah. always... Fair. Don't speak when you're angry. Don't speak yeah, and I wait until I'm a little bit more calm mm -hmm. and then I'm like, okay, then I will speak. But I think he takes it as a... <laughs> as a, She's not talking to me. I'm not going to talk to her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's so immature. It's so immature. And I know that. It's so immature. Yeah. And I think certain traits like this come with age and experience and maturity yeah. as well. Like, I used to be super fiery back then in my relationships. I'm like, yeah. I'm right. I'm right. But I think that's wrong. a defense mechanism. Like, yeah, you're defending yeah, yourself, right? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. you yeah. would be fiery because you're like, well, well, I'm not going to be attacked. I'm going to defend myself by attacking back. Exactly. In hindsight, when you look back at it, you're like, maybe I should have just calmed down a little. Right? And you like, you just learn these things with time, right? Exactly. And, like, with experience. So, Tabs, in a previous interview you did with Vogue, you mentioned that, you know, obviously Louis helped you confront certain things in your past toxic relationship as well. Yeah. So tell us more about that and how, you know, a couple can work together after having a past like that. I knew something was up with Tabs and mm. then I think a couple of months down the line we just actually had like a sit down talk about it because we were like and uh, this wasn't a case of like oh I asked what was wrong and she said nothing like I, mm. I could you know when you can just tell yes. like you can gauge something's happened was in the background. Was it just a vibe that you could tell something was I wrong? I think it was just I think I think it was just watching her interact with like said person or like mm. seeing her behavior like change slightly mm. and i think those are kind of like tells like you know i'm not trying to say to put you down anyway but you know when you can tell like a child's been told off by the mum right like say you're in a supermarket and you can tell a child's been told off by their mum and yeah. their moods change yeah, yeah yeah i think it's almost like that where you get like inside yourself or mm. you notice someone get inside yourself and you're like yeah. rah that's not right was it a difficult conversation for you guys to have the conversation in itself is always going to be difficult mm. But I didn't feel like it was hard to tell him mm. because of how understanding he is. I and think how it's harder to hear, you know. Open. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But say you have a child and you have like this X amount of love for that child. And yeah. then you know that the child's like getting bullied. Right. Or getting hit. Painful for you to hear. Yeah, it's painful yeah. for you to hear. But also at the same time, you're like, what can I do? Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I'm like, part of me is helpless almost. No, no, no part of me is like, I want to go like stamp on his face. As like great I as it said, sounds, like this 100%, podcast right? is for pure like, honesty. I, I, like I okay. wanted, to, like, but there's like initial reaction. Yes, yeah. yeah. You feel terrible for the person, yeah. and then your main focus now is on like, okay, well, how do I help this person? Yes, like so you, you migrate that energy that you had for like ruining someone to like, okay, how can I help the one that you love? That was yeah. my next question. What did you? What sort of steps did you take or identify to take to help? Tabby, because I think for the benefit of our audience as well, I know it's sometimes so broad and difficult to address a topic like this, yeah. but if you could, what were some things you did to support her at the point? I think, I, I think knowing what went on in the background previously, mm. I tried to do the complete opposite in the sense of like, I don't think Tabs had much control of what she was allowed to wear, mm -hmm. what to do. I don't think she had control of her own money, for example. Even though we, like, we work together now, I don't deal with any of that stuff. I put Tabs on a pedestal because I'm like, I want her to be the most independent, like boss ass bitch that she could be because she should know how that feels and she is that. Does that make sense? I don't want her feeling small again. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's like the hard Aww. thing to work out. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you make decisions together. Exactly. Yeah. Like you're equal. Yeah. Like it's, uh, it's, you're just equal. You're not like you, it's not like this man like being like gentleman and all that shit. You generally just are as equal yeah. and be like, hey, you make the decisions as well. Yeah. So Tabby, obviously, you know, um, as we come to an end to our podcast very soon in a, in a few minutes, how would you then identify certain things to uh, certain people, for example, friends, family members? How can they show support or how can they reach out to someone who might be going through? Um, a toxic relationship one of the main like pieces of advice I would give is yeah. that just be there mm -hmm. there's going to be moments where like survivors feel like they are taking three steps forwards and then it's going to be like ten step back yeah and then they'll try again it's like five steps forward one step back and it's going to be like this wave of like you know up, up and, and down downs yeah. okay I'll go. of trying to 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 leave or whatever right mm. but i think there needs to be constant support because if they feel constantly supported they're going to have a bit more courage to do it because you can't just tell someone to leave they need to feel like they can no i get you maybe like you know if there's somebody that's listening out there then yeah. you are somehow in a, the same in relationship mm -hmm. where you know it's toxic or whatever this is advice i would have given myself back then mm. be open mm. and speak to somebody about it that was my thing i did not want anyone to know that this was what i was going through so i refused to tell anyone even my closest best friend had no idea for six years i didn't want to open up i didn't want to talk to anybody about it because i felt like this was my problem it's something i needed to deal with but your friends and your family are there to help were you concerned about the image of your relationship to others so. it was mm. more of me okay because i was with this person yeah you know how you know when you're with a partner your partner reflects you and blah yes. blah blah yeah um i just wanted people to look at my choice and be like yeah okay mm. she made a great she made mm. a good choice but i think that's yeah. where like everyone fucks up at the same time because yeah. you want to be relatable at the same do you know what i mean like yeah. tabs had her EP come out, the things I should have said EP, where Tabs was very honest and open about it. And I think it was the most relatable piece of work that she'd it done, was right? Where, beautiful. where yeah. so much so that everyone would comment on it and be like, I've been feeling exactly the same thing, or I've been going through that, or I've had friends that go through mm -hmm. that. And I think that allows you to connect more and shows that just by being yourself and showing a bit of weakness mm. allows you to be stronger in like the long run. Yeah. 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 And that's something that I've learned yeah 100 percent. after anything else that you guys would like to add maybe even as a couple um to our audience members before we wrap up your friend may be defensive still right like but don't give up on them don't give up on yeah. them. yeah like check okay. in like say if you fall out be a good friend in the sense of checking on them maybe like yes. a month down the line or two months down the line because maybe their dynamic has changed i'm not saying it's on them to do it but like say if they reached out three months down the line where your mood has changed you, you might have been like yeah this has been happening yeah. So don't give yeah. up on them is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I think we've had so many key takeaways from this podcast, you know, although I understand it can be tough sometimes to open up about these things. And I really respect and admire that you guys came on, talked about it, Tabby, especially, you know, I know you have tons of experiences to share and I hope yeah. that you didn't have to hold back too much on it. I know that there are details where it's tough to reveal on a public platform as well. Yeah. But you hit many key points and Louis, thank you for sharing how you supported Tabby along the way too. I Thanks. think... You guys are perfect match. I'm so glad you found each other. So what do you guys have on coming up in the next um, few months? Tabs has her single coming out in the next couple of months. We don't right? really have a date yet, but mm -hmm. we know that it's going to be in the Yay. next two or three I think, months. Well, I'm hoping before yeah. like Chinese New Year, right? Hopefully, fingers Hopefully, crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Lou and I had a blast, didn't we? I had fun. Yeah, lots had of fun. fun. You were going, oh, I'm going to do the like, subscribe, and comment, no, and then I'm doing the notification stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. Lou and I had an absolute blast. Yeah, I had right? fun. Yeah. <laughs> if you like uh, this type of content, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn notifications on, please. Yeah, yes. we're going to wait here until you hit the bell. Have you hit? Yep, Louis is done. a pro. You yep. guys are pros. I'm, I'm just going to let you host the next episode. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Thanks for having us, sons. Uh, please leave a comment below. Tell us what you think. And also tell us what you'd like to hear and who you'd like to see in the upcoming episodes. And we'll see you next time.